Tired of boring text animations? Let's change that. In this video, you'll learn how to create eye-catching, kinetic text effects in After Effects, step-by-step. Step. It's smooth, stylish, and insanely easy. Stick around, you're gonna love the result. Let's roll the intro. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I'm naming mine Kinetic, and I'm using a full HD resolution, but you can choose your own settings if needed. Next, create a new solid layer and name it Background. Pick any color you like and click. Okay, now go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for the Gradient Ramp effect. Apply it to the background layer and adjust the colors to something that suits your project. After that, create another solid layer and call it Shape. Hit OK, then search for the Fractal Noise effect in the Effects and Presets. Apply it to this new layer. Set the contrast value to 800, brightness to minus 100, and the complexity value to 1. Then open the transform settings and set the scale to around 5000. We will use this evolution option for animating the gradient. That 5000 value might be a bit too high, so try lowering it to around 2000 for a better result. You can always tweak these settings based on your style. Now go to the first frame of your timeline and add a keyframe to the evolution setting. Move to the last frame of your timeline and change the evolution value to something different to create the animation. Once that's done, collapse the Fractal Noise Effect panel to keep things organized. Then search for the Colorama effect and apply it to the same layer just below the Fractal Noise. Open the Output Cycle option, and then look at the Output Cycle. To simplify the look, remove some of the colors by dragging the little arrows away from the circular color wheel. This reduces the number of colors and gives a more focused, stylized result. To change the color of the Colorama effect, simply double-click on the color triangle and choose any color that fits your style. For this example, I'm going with a vibrant tone to keep it visually interesting. Now you might notice some harsh or sharp edges in the effect. You can always smooth these out by adjusting the gradient handles on the color wheel. To further refine the look, go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for the Fastbox Blur. Apply it just below the Colorama effect on your shape layer. Set the blur radius to around 70 to soften everything nicely. Next, search for the CC Sphere effect and apply it below all the other effects on the same layer. Increase the radius to 650 so that the sphere fills a larger portion of the screen. Adjust the Y offset to position the sphere exactly where you want it in the comp. Then open the rotation settings and experiment with different rotation values until you find something that works for your design. Once you're happy with the angle, open the light section and adjust the light direction for a more dynamic feel. I am trying to minimize all the dark shades here to make it vibrant. Now to remove any harsh reflections, go to the shading section and set the specular value to zero. This gives a clean, smooth surface to the sphere. Still, if the visual feels a bit flat, right click on the shape layer, go to layer styles and select inner glow. Open the inner glow settings and increase the size to around 100 or even 200 for a more pronounced effect. Set the opacity to 100% and keep the glow color white. This gives a glowing edge that enhances the overall appeal. Finally, if you notice any overexposed or white areas, you can go back to the fractal noise settings and slightly lower the brightness to fix it. Change the value until you start seeing colors. Great. Now press M to minimize all layers then let's add the text. Go to the toolbar and select the text tool. For this project, I'm using the Poppins bold font, but you can choose any bold and clean font you prefer. Set your desired font size and spacing. Now click anywhere on the screen and type your text. Position the text in the center of the composition. Once it's in place, right click on the text layer. Go to layer styles and select gradient overlay. Open the gradient overlay options and click on edit gradient. Here you can change the colors to suit your style. I'm keeping a vibrant gradient to match the overall design. Adjust the gradient points if needed until the colors blend well. You can always experiment to create something unique. Now let's animate the text. Open the text layer and click on the animate button. Choose opacity. Set the opacity value to 0%. Then open the range selector and change the offset to negative 100%. Make sure you're at the first frame, then set a keyframe on the offset. Move to around the one second mark and change the offset to 100%. This will create a nice reveal animation from left to right. 
Open the Advanced tab and change the shape to ramp up. To smooth out the animation, set the Ease High and Ease Low values, both to 50%. This will add a soft start and end to the animation, making it more fluid. Minimize this text layer. Next, duplicate the text layer. Move the duplicated layer a few frames forward on the timeline to create a staggered animation effect. Then open the bottom text layer and turn off the layer style effect. This gives a clean base animated overlay. This way we get a smooth and clean animated look. Now I'm going to change the color of the bottom text layer slightly to give it some variation and add more depth to the design. This helps the animation feel more dynamic. Of course, you can spend more time adjusting the gradient or color to make it match your design better. Once you are happy with the look, select both text layers and place them properly in the center of the screen. Next, grab the text tool again and add your second line of text. Type the new text and place it right next to the first one. To make sure both lines are perfectly aligned, press Ctrl R to bring up the ruler. Drag a guide from the top and place it at the base of the first text layer. Now line up the second text layer with the guide so everything looks neat. You can now fit the view to 100% and hide the ruler once everything is aligned. Apply the same layer style to the new text by copying it from the first text layer and pasting it onto the second one. Make sure the layer style is enabled. You can also just duplicate the original text layer and change the text, which is even easier. Now we'll animate the second text. Go to the one second mark and press P to open the position property. Add a keyframe. Place this keyframe on the two second mark. At the one second mark, change the Y position to push the text down, for example, to 500. Then at the same three second mark, add another keyframe. Go to the four second mark and change the Y position to bring it back up, maybe around 300. This way the text comes in, stays for a moment and exits smoothly. Select all position keyframes, press F9 to apply Easy Ease. Open the graph editor. If it looks different, right click and select Edit Speed Graph. Adjust the curves to make the motion smooth. Now return to the main timeline and solo the text layers for a clean preview of the animation. We will unsolo the layers later. This way, we can preview this text animation much faster. Adjust the keyframes slightly if needed, as the full animation should only last two seconds longer. This is how it looks now. To enhance it further, let's add motion blur. If you don't see the switch tab, right click in this top area, go to columns, and enable both switches and modes since we'll be using them. I don't need the parent column for this project, so I'm hiding it to keep the interface clean. Now turn on the motion blur for the necessary layers, and this adds a nice smoothness to the animation. It's looking much better now. Next, trim the layers to match the duration of your animation by using the shortcut Alt plus the closing square bracket key. It will trim out the layer at the playhead location. Now deselect any selected layers and go to the toolbar to pick the rectangle tool. Make sure the fill is set to a solid color and stroke is set to none. Create a wide rectangle that can cover even the longest words. Rename this layer to Slide Mask for clarity. Select your purpose text layer and change its track mat to alpha mat using the slide mask. Now your text will only appear within the shape of the mask. You may notice a sharp edge where the mask cuts off the text. To soften this, Select the Slide Mask layer, go to Effects and Presets, and search for Fast Box Blur. Apply it to the mask layer. Change the blur dimension to vertical and increase the blur radius to 20. This will soften the top and bottom edges of the mask, creating a much cleaner transition when the text animates in and out. That looks much more professional. Perfect. Now let's trim the front of the layer as well. Just grab the edge of the layer and drag it inward. This keeps our animation neatly timed. Now we'll add more text to the scene. Start by duplicating the current text layer and dragging the duplicate downward in the timeline. Press U to reveal all the keyframes and make sure the starting keyframe of this new text layer aligns perfectly with the keyframes of the original layer. This ensures both layers have identical animations. Great, now double click on the new text layer and update it with your new content. Please ignore this typing mistake. I know how to spell vision, but I didn't pay attention at this time. Also, for layout purposes, we need to align this text to the left instead of center. Go to the Paragraph panel and change the text alignment to left so that each new line starts from the same side. Now here's a small issue. Since we've already added position keyframes, we can't move the text layer manually without creating unwanted new keyframes. Ideally, this step should be done before animating the text. 
However, to fix it now, you can press A to open the anchor point property and adjust the x-axis anchor point value. This will shift the text horizontally without affecting your position animation. This way, the animation stays intact and perfectly aligned. Now go ahead and create more duplicates of this text layer as needed to fill out your design. After duplicating and positioning them, you can unsole the text layers to bring back your full composition view and see the complete design in action. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something helpful and enjoyed the process. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace.